Hey guys, welcome back to Real Life Scenario. Oh, 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 oh. Welcome back to the show. Shout out to all our real lovers out there. Welcome Hi guys. back. Welcome back to all of our real lovers. Um, and if you're new here and you want to be in a real lover gang, which you want to be, wink wink. I gotta stop get, throwing up them signals because yeah, it could you be something what, real. My what bad. That is. I take that back. These are the signals. Yeah, real lover gangs. That's it. All right. Um <laughs> <laughs> But if you want to be a part of the gang, we want you to be a part of the gang. Make sure you subscribe, like, comment, follow, and review the podcast. It is free to you, but it means a lot to us. So please make sure to do that. Yeah. Uh we're back in our happy place. Rhonda, how are ya? I'm lovely. I'm lovely. Living the dream, as they say. Living your life like it's, it's so sarcastic. I say that when I absolutely don't feel that way, but in all actuality, I'm feeling pretty good. I'm good. feeling pretty good. Things are good. How good. are things with you? Things are well. Good. Um, I'm glad to see our Amanda episode still doing well oh, and yeah. Tahiri still doing well. Shout out to Tahiri. I just talked to her the other day. Did you? Just checking in on her. Yeah. Yes. I sent her a message too, just like, you hey know, girl. episode doing well. Yes. Like, I appreciate you for being so open and just mm-hmm. seeing how she is because she was so open and transparent with us. Yes. And we have a little, ge- we'll call it a geographical connection. Mm. Oh, and yeah. And so yeah. she was checking on that too. Got you. Got yeah. you. So we had a little chit chat. It was good. It was good. So, That's yes, nice. I'm happy to see both episodes doing really well. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Shout out to the real lovers for showing up. Mm-hmm. And if you knew, like I said, welcome. Yes. And also, if you knew and you haven't seen, the Tahiri Jose episode or the Amanda Seals episode, go check them out. We also have a, a lovely amount of guest episodes. Yes. So go catch up on them all. Really, really great, valuable information in every single one. Yeah. And the good thing is we have more coming. Mm-hmm. I'm excited about the guests we have coming up too. So yes. um, make sure to stay tuned. Please. And speaking of guests, in our real lover review, I'm going to highlight another review from the Amanda episode Very that nice. people tend to love, and it is doing numbers. Yeah. Um, so this is from Bilal. Oh, I Motley, love that name. Thirty six ninety nine. Mm-hmm. Fantastic episode. Amanda Sills is not only an amazing artist, but also a remarkable person. She's a true force. It was great that the host allowed her to fully express herself without interruption. Great job. The podcast just gained a new follower. Hey, shout Bilal. out to you. So that means you are tuning in right now. Hope you heard this shout out. We really, really, right. really Bilal appreciate it. Soul this. Sister, right? Yes. You One of my favorites. My favorite soul song. Sister, soul sister. Hey, sister. You must be, you must. <laughs> yes. Oh. He is oh. so dope. <laughs> he is so good. That might be him. Who knows? Um, Probably be. not, but <laughs> <laughs> shout out to you, Bilal. We, we really appreciate it. We really and I do. appreciate everybody who took that mindset because. Our show is really about perspective. Like people mm-hmm. always say, oh, give advice, give advice. I was like, no, we don't give advice. We share our perspectives. Yes. And we hope that sharing our perspectives gives you more insight into the different things that you deal with in your life. And what Amanda did is that she came on and shared her perspective. She shared her experience. And we are grateful for that. And when we bring people on our show, we want to give them the space mm-hmm. to share their experience and to share their perspective so that people can have a more well-rounded conversation mm-hmm. about what's going on. And I appreciate that. Yeah. And you know what? I am also appreciative of those who continue the dialogue to move the dialogue along to have a conversation about the different topics, even if you don't agree. What I don't appreciate is people who attack people personally mm-hmm. based off of their opinion. Yeah. What you yeah. what that person <laughs> says you can debate the topic submission leadership going on dates like all those things are things that people can add their own perspective and that's ultimately how we do better and be better is based off of moving uh for the dialogue in these different spaces and we understand we're not always going to be in agreement but don't take that as the time to attack somebody personally yes there's no reason or space to ever do that nope and i don't understand why people do do that especially when the person isn't necessarily isn't attacking you personally like so why are you attacking them i don't like that i don't and i know it's not our real lovers in here right it can't be because 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 our real lovers are really all about love and i have felt the brunt of this um i know that you have Um, I remember like going off about it when we had, um, Damona, don't call me white girl on the show. Same thing. I just think it's a very nasty behavior. Even, even some of the comments, because we do, we see a lot of stuff y'all like, 
some of the stuff that was being said about Tahiri, like none of it is okay. You do not have to agree with their perspectives. Like no. Dre said, you don't even have to agree with our perspectives. That's okay. We can debate and spar on that piece of it. But when you start getting into what you believe people um, look like or what they deal with in their lives or making it sound like them being single is a punishment. That's exactly why you don't have no man. It's like, like stop but we don't have to do that and and more than anything and i hate to say this to sound like the true baltimore baltimore girl that i am but a lot of y'all get on this internet and say things that you would never say to a person's face you would never come up to me and disagree with me and be like and that's because you got that big ass gap in your teeth y'all would never do that in, nope. in real life it's never happened to to me in my 40 years of living so please stop getting on this internet or letting it gas you up to say disrespectful things to people it's not okay and i'm sure your mom and your grandma would be very disappointed in you they would be and it is pointless stop doing that because I see people write dissertations as disrespectful, and you spend an hour on that. And guess you what's put it in happen? Chat GPT. You reviewed it, sent it to a friend, and then in one second, I just deleted it. All your hard work is gone. Gone. It's pointless. <laughs> it's so gone. why even do it in the first <laughs> place? Wasting you your wasted time. your time, and your voice was not heard. Um, so <laughs> please don't do that. Stop. Uh, <laughs> we don't like it, and yes, we have thick skin. We understand the space that we're in. We we get it. We really, really do. But it's just not okay. Not to us, not to our guests, not to anyone on the internet. Truly, if you don't have anything nice to say, shut up. For sure. Just that simple. And speaking of that, um, we have our real life love scenario. Rhonda, mm -hmm. you want to read this one? Absolutely. Okay. Let's let's jump into it because you sent I, you sent this. Right? I sent this. Yeah. And I when I read that, I was I was disgusted. Okay, let's jump into it. Um, on episode three of Pop the Balloon or Find Love, this is a YouTube show hosted by Arlette Amuli. Sorry if I'm saying that wrong. One of the female contestants was incredibly condescending and rude to one of the male contestants on the show. But what was interesting is that instead of attacking her in return, he responded in love and like kindly corrected her disrespect. And of course, because the internet is a little spicy, once that clip went viral, the female contestant's social media page was like flooded with like, you are disrespectful. Of course, people were very mean to her. Yes. But I, but I felt like she deserved it. So seeing this clip, it just was very hard to see because he was just being a genuinely kind guy. Kind. And she just was like. Yes just attacking him and i was like what is wrong with this girl so i have a take okay might not be popular yeah. um i'm listening the first time i watched it, it was cringy mm -hmm. and i was really you know taken aback by it and it was just like i can't stand people like that yeah. right but then as I watched it a few more times, I was like, I appreciate the openness, right? Because that, I guess the show is about that. You're asked, why not that person? And I think what she ran down is what a lot of people do in their head when mm -hmm. they meet people. Mm -hmm. So I appreciate you actually putting that out in the open for the purpose of this platform, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that people can see this is how people read people sometimes. Yeah. They come in, they see somebody, and they start to, in their mind, disqualify them off mm -hmm. of so many different things. Mm -hmm. Now, you don't say it out loud, right? right? But you think about it. Yeah. So I appreciate the openness and candidness because that's what things like this are for is to talk about that. Yes. Right? Um, and I think there's always the cliche, right? Don't judge a book by its cover. Mm-hmm. And I think that that's real because what's in the book, you know, mm -hmm. may be well beyond what the cover actually says. Yes, that's correct. Um, but then it also made me think, well, if you don't judge it by the cover, what do you judge it by? Mm -hmm. Because it's impossible to get in depth with every single book to know what it's truly about. Sure. So I think on one side, we shouldn't judge people by the cover. Right. But on the other side, we do need to make sure we present ourselves well. Mm -hmm in a way that our cover is representative of who we are as much mm -hmm. that we possibly can. Yeah. And not saying that the guy wasn't doing that, but I always hear don't judge a book by its cover. And it's like, 
Well, you have. There's a reason why people who design books focus so much on the covers. Yes. Because a lot of people do look at the cover to make a decision mm-hmm. on if they want to buy the book and yeah. spend more time with the book. So it's important that we invest in our appearance and just the way we present ourselves to the outside world if we want to be perceived in a certain way. Right. Yeah, there could be more to you, but yeah, what you pres- what you show is what people are going to see because a lot of people aren't going to take the time to dig in to know more about you. Mm-hmm. Now, with that being said, with her, I appreciate the transparency, like I said, because people... I feel like do this in their heads all the time when it's come to men. Oh, he's short. Like, uh, look at mm-hmm. his, this, look at you're <laughs> thinking these in your head. Right. But I think one of the m- most important aspects when it comes to a partner mm-hmm. and somebody that you want to spend the rest of your life with is generosity and kindness. Mm-hmm. And the thing that was all putting for me was that she just came off as somebody who wasn't a kind person. Very unkind. And That is super unattractive Mm -hmm. and something that I wouldn't want to be around. I wouldn't encourage anybody to want to be around because I love in the Pink Sweats episode, he said people or Bunny said people who are generous Mm -hmm. are are generous to everyone. Yeah. They're not just generous to the person that they're with. Yes. People who are kind to their person Mm -hmm. are kind to everyone. Right. They're kind people. Mm -hmm. So her in this situation, I don't believe that she is like that way with him and then can just be a kind person to the person that she's with. Right. Yeah. It's like, that's not the type of person that Mm -hmm. you are. And that's not the type of person. I don't think anybody would want to be with Mm -hmm. or would be conducive for a healthy relationship. So that was, um, I appreciate again, the transparency and the Mm -hmm. openness for the purpose of this show. Mm -hmm. Cause I think that was part of the purpose Mm -hmm. because I do know that a lot of you who are judging her, y'all do the same rundown when it (laughs) comes to folks sometimes about people in your mind. Right. So at least it was verbalized, but there's ways to verbalize things that don't come off condescending that don't come off this or that. Like Mm -hmm. even in a way that she didn't like the way he's talked, there's a way that you, if you have to communicate that it bothered you, there's a way to communicate that. Yeah. Like some people even put on themselves like I know it's not right and I don't even know why I feel this way but mm-hmm. something about it bothers me like and I don't yeah. I don't even know why like it bothers me mm-hmm. maybe it reminds me of blah 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 like yeah. you know there's ways to approach it and even if you don't stick the kindness people can at least see the effort that you're trying to take yes. to communicate it in like a kind like way. I'm not trying to yes hurt you this is just my preference and I, I, I'm not trying to, I'm not trying to offend you though. It's not that you're not a great person. That's I'm it. sure you're like mm-hmm. awesome. And there's a way to do that. And she wasn't kind. And that was the part that bothered me the most. Yeah. Because the only, it just was so just icky and nasty to me. And I don't know if the premise of the show is to like be so specifically like, yeah, like, you know, I think it's too, it's like a dating show. It's like a process of elimination. Mm-hmm. Like you don't want to date this person do you actually have to go into all of the detail as to why you don't? Or can you simply say, you know, you're just not, you know, you're not my type or you're not someone that I would normally go for. And you don't even have to go into why. And it was just even in the speed in which she was rattling it off. It just was like gross. Like, yeah, and, yeah, and your hair, like, why, why why, do you have the hat on? And he's like, because I just want to like, wear like a hat. hats. Like you made it seem like the man having a hat on his head was, was, a, was a problem when you're literally wearing the equivalent of a hat on your head. You have a like really, she had like a really big ponytail on her head. I mean, so he could, he imagine if he walked up to her and was like, well, I got a big fake ponytail sitting on top of your head. We would be looking at him like, damn, that's, that's crazy. He's a man. That's crazy. So it's like, why would you think that it was okay? I agree with you. I will, I said this, I don't remember what episode number it was, but I was like, I will always want to be like sweet to my person, but I want to, I'm a sweet person in in general. Mm. Like I will find 20 extra words to soften the blow. (laughs) I really, really will. Because if I, I really don't want to hurt you. You know what I mean? Like, even if ultimately this still hurts you, I don't want to spew it at you in a very hurtful way. Even she's like, she even sounded ridiculous when she's like, I just want someone with like a more extended vocabulary and you just don't have that in your day to day speak. You mean speech? And also how and do how you, you know, know what I got you in just, my day to day? 
speech. speech. <laughs> right. <laughs> like I just met you. Like it's been like yeah. 60 seconds. So it just was, it was nasty, but I agree with you. If someone is kind, they are kind consistently with everyone, with strangers, with people that they, that they love on that full spectrum. And I just, it was just, it was gross to me and I hate to say it, but I'm not mad at the internet for handling her for how she handled him because it was very disrespectful. But I want to give that brother major kudos for sure. because how he responded to her was more than she deserved. For sure. And a huge reflection of who he is, who he came from, where he came from and how he sees himself and also how he views women that he views them enough even when a woman is being less than a woman for sure he's still gonna hold her in in a light of like like sis you 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 shouldn't do that like sure. that's not okay you know what i mean like shout out to you yeah. what, what I, I wish i knew his that, name the shout out to you no that's the other side of it that i i like brothers like that are the ones that we celebrate on this show yes um because even it's funny we had talked about that in our group chat of how pink responded to somebody in the comments of one of the videos yes. it's like when you respond to people that way mm -hmm. and give them that grace like you're doing work well beyond you know mm -hmm. even what you're doing in that moment like your ability to handle things with care and have the eq that we talked about mm -hmm. um really could impact her life in a way yeah. that might be like she may not see it in this moment, but then when she goes back, maybe learns from this situation, hopefully mm -hmm. that she learns from it. She may look back and say like, oh, that's what kindness looks like. Yeah. That's what generosity looks like. Mm -hmm. That's what grace looks like. So definitely a hand clap to that brother because you handled that situation very well. Better than um, I would have. And, and I'm glad that, that, <laughs> that you approached it that way. But you know what the unfortunate thing is, too, mm -hmm. is that sometimes people are in such an unhealthy space mm -hmm. that the way that they judge the person is by that reaction. So depending on the type of person that she is, she may have did that to see if she gets the reaction, because then if she gets the reaction, then that's the type of person that she want to be with. And that's the mentality that some people have to where it's like, I want to be challenged. I want somebody who's going to go back at me. You saw if, if you take an approach and people see that as being soft. Yeah. People see that as when I first met my wife, she was like, oh, when you was opening doors for me, like the place I was in, like, I thought that was corny. That was like, and it's like, oh, shoot, this person just treat me like a gentleman with respect, yes. being nice, showing me he cares. Mm -hmm. But depending on where you're at in life, mm -hmm. those things, they feel funny. To they you. feel funny to you. Yeah. They don't feel like love, depending on what you saw and interpret love to be. Yeah. So I pray for her that yeah. she figures out she learns from this mm -hmm. um yeah grows from this yeah and does better from this um and i think when she looks back in her life if she is able to grow that she'll see this as a good point in her life to be able to understand what is right and what isn't right yeah um and again i hope that brother finds love you deserve it brother you do and whoever she is will be lucky to have you yes she would be god bless you <laughs> your sweet self and i like the way you day-to-day -day speak <laughs> okay all right let's jump into our real love scenario we okay. have a little different spin today all right this is from a bestie betrayed That's very matthew mcconaughey all right all right <laughs> um, she says hi Rhonda and Dre first of all I love the podcast and I got put on to it recently I love listening to two mature adults discuss relationships and I always feel like you guys are my friends that I've never met you are friends too because we are real love she says I'm writing today because I have a dilemma about my best friend we have been friends for over 20 years during our adolescence and young adulthood I would consider her a best friend. As we grew older, we sort of grew apart. We went our own way, but still kept in pretty close contact and update each other about our lives. We now live several states away from each other, so a lot of our contact is via text, occasional FaceTimes, and social media. Recently, within the last three years, I noticed a pattern with her that's starting to annoy me. I noticed that every time she begins dating a man, she completely disappears. As soon as they call it quits or trouble arises between them, she reappears and is always calling me, asking for advice, and and trying to make small talk i also notice every time she's going through something i hear from her almost daily as soon as she figures it out or finds a new guy to date 
the contact becomes very limited. I understand that friends need a shoulder to cry on sometimes. And I also understand that when you start dating someone new, sometimes your other relationships aren't watered as much and they should be for a little while, especially during that honeymoon phase. The problem is I'm starting to feel like I'm being used as a placeholder. She never checks on me to see if I need anything. I feel like most of the conversations are initiated by her sounding like, hey girl, what's up? Is everything good? By the way, I need your advice on this guy. I just started dating. I feel like I tell her things about my life and she forgets. For example, last year I got my degree. She asked me at least five times, what degree are you pursuing? This let me know that she wasn't really paying attention or cared about me when I told her. I told her my graduation date as well many times. I have yet to hear congratulations from her and I graduated three months ago. Mm. I'm starting to feel like I'm only useful to her as a free therapist. The reason why I haven't said anything to her is because we have somewhat been through this before. A few years ago when I was in labor with my son, I told her I was in labor and she went to hang out with her friends instead. That created a rift in our relationship. Initially didn't didn't think she did anything wrong there. It took me explaining how it hurt my feelings for her to realize. We didn't speak for almost two years after that. We reconnected a couple years later. I pretty much accepted that we had great times as kids, but maybe into adulthood, we aren't as close as I thought we were. All in all, I've chosen to not say anything yet because I didn't want to seem like a hater or start any unnecessary conflict. My question is, should I tell her how I feel and risk ending the friendship again, or should I just slowly fade away and make myself less accessible? Mm. Well, thank you for sharing. Thank you, Bestie um, Betrayed. That's the name I gave them, gave I, her. Um, I'm sorry that you're dealing with that. Yeah. Um, we've all dealt with those friendship dynamics before. Mm-hmm. I know Rhonda has a, will have a lot to say on this stuff as well. Yes. Um, yes. But where where you want to start, Rhonda? Listen, in my former, not my former life, in my former life, actually, if you, you, you may be here from that. I used to have a podcast named Friending, yes, and it was did. really about... Um, friendship dynamics and these types of complexities that happen when you've had friendships for a really long time. So I think it's only appropriate to talk around expectations. Um, And I actually think that's an interesting theme because what I learned while doing friending and like just doing research and talking about things is that a lot of friends don't think that there should be expectations in friendship. It's like we think it's okay to set them in romantic relationships and with your parent, with your parents and your kids, but it's like we just think that friendships are supposed to just happen, and I I, I shouldn't expect anything from you. So I I guess maybe one of my questions is how do you set those ex- expectations or communicate the needs that you might have in your friendships? I, th- I think it's really about defining what is friendship first Mm. like what is that and that's something that i talk about a lot on this show is that we often have different definitions of what things are yes so when you begin relationships it's important to define what is love what is dating Mm -hmm. what is friendship like what are these things so then that can help us mutually shape the expectations for this relationship Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and the one thing you have brought up um is one of the reasons why I started Relationship Restore. Mm -hmm. It's because I felt like at the core, relationships have all the things, the same things that make them successful, whether Mm -hmm. that's a friendship, whether that's an intimate relationship, whether that's a family situation, and whether that's even a relationship with objects, right? Mm -hmm. Still all has the same elements. And it reminded me of, when I read this scenario, it reminded me of when we worked together at Ovation. Mm -hmm. And we used to go to Harris Teeter to the hot bar often, right? (laughs) Yes. To go eat that food, that salmon. If you get there right at 12 o'clock, when when they first bring the first batch out. That was a good hot bar. Good, right? Yes. So great. And we used Mm -hmm. to go there all the time. But once I stopped working at Ovation, and I still stayed in the same area. You did. Once I stopped working at Ovation where that place wasn't a walk away, Mm -hmm. I no longer went there. Yeah. And I had to come to the realization that that relationship was situational and positional. Mm -hmm. That as long as I was in that situation and then that position, that was what fueled that relationship. Mm -hmm. But if the relationship was a true love for that hot bar, even if I would have left, Mm -hmm. I would have still went. But it wasn't. And I think sometimes we had to understand that certain 
things that we think are real deep friendships are really positional friendships or situational friendships that the only reason we have this relationship with this person is based off the position that we're in mm-hmm. or based off of uh the situation that we're in yeah and once you start to distance yourself from that position you get in a new position or get in a new situation mm-hmm. you realize that the connection is now gone yeah. and the relationship is now offered altered because it wasn't truly built on anything that was truly like you know of long-term substance building Mm -hmm. it was something based off of that and um i think that that's something that she could be dealing with in in this yeah um and that and understanding the difference between those to go back to your question helps you to set the expectation Mm -hmm. for that relationship yeah and a lot of times we don't it's hard to identify those right because Mm -hmm. it feels like a real friendship right it feels like this is something that could last a long time um but it's not until you exit those areas or positions or situations that you you realize this isn't what I thought it was. Mm -hmm. And then which first we want to say that's okay. Right. That happens. It does happen. Um, But you have to understand when to let it go. Mm. And I think that that's what, what what comes with the expectations is that if you recognize that not only are they not hitting me up, I don't have the desire to really, hit them up right because that's the issue in friendships right oh you never call well you never call either because we both ain't really because we both are checked out yeah we both are checked out for the other person to do the heavy lift but a lot of times we hold on to those things Mm -hmm. and we're expecting that person to be the person that they were at one moment in our life or for a season and they're no longer that person because circumstances Mm -hmm. and situations have now changed. Yes. That's why it's rare. That's what, when your mama say ain't, everybody ain't your friend. <laughs> that's what she mean by that's that. That's exactly what she's talking about. Like everybody ain't your like friend, like real like friend, friend that yes. you could count on. Mm-hmm. Move states away. Still see it like mm-hmm. Crystal, for instance, is your friend. Like yes. you still see her. You still yes. interact with her. You still talk Got to a her. Date coming up soon. I'm even though about she it. is not here anymore. Right. 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 That that's something different. Right. Mm-hmm. So. Yeah. Exactly. I think defining friend is important. So I'm going to read what Oxford says a friend is. Okay. It says a person whom one knows and with whom one has a bond of mutual affection typically exclusive of sexual or family relations. And I think that is a very clearly a generic definition of of how two people who do not have a sexual or romantic relationship and aren't related by blood, that's what you would call it. But I would challenge that or push that a little further to say that friendships go into very different pockets and there's usually adjectives that need to go before the noun to actually describe the type of friends that you have, you have social friends, right? You have work friends, you got, um, you got college friends, you know, as in not only did we meet in college, that's the last time we really had a relationship, right? Like Mm -hmm. I still consider them a friend because, well, it's no bad blood. Um, You know, you have lifelong friends or best friends, you know, like friends. Yeah. Close friends. They're words that describe the relationship And once you can put them into pockets, that's when you can determine the expectations. Mm -hmm. What I expect of my close or best friends is very different than what I expect from my social or college friends. You know, like you just referenced Crystal. Crystal is is going to be held to a different set of expectations than a friend that I don't interact with. But once every five or six years, like I do expect communication from Crystal. I do expect us to have some physical quality time together. I do um, expect that if I reach out and I say, hey, like I need you, that if she is in a position to be able to support me, that she would support me, you know? So you can't even begin to have expectations of people if you don't know what category to put them in. Mm -hmm. I think sometimes we make the mistake with friendships Um, by expecting exact reciprocity. And I learned years ago that you will probably never get exact reciprocity. But for the people that matter the most, for your best friends, your close friends, your very tight-knit support group, there should be a great deal of reciprocity, as in what you deposit, you also withdraw. 
I agree. And I think also part of that pocket when it comes to expectation is you have the pockets of what type of friend that is, Mm -hmm. but then you also have to understand your friend, Mm -hmm. right? Yes. Like that's a huge part of it. Huge. Like there are some people, like there are some people who are great with communication. I have a friend who is great with communication. Mm -hmm. Listen, he calls all throughout the years, always a caller, Mm -hmm. always a Mm check-in, always like he's really good at that. Some people aren't as good at that and you got to like have to stay on them Mm -hmm. or, you know, they aren't necessarily the call all the time, but they're a friend. If you know you need them, they'll drop everything for Mm -hmm. you. Mm -hmm. Like they they will. And you just have to understand, you know, who are the ones that you could do certain things with, how they communicate, Mm -hmm. um, you know, how they act. Like it's just understanding your friend's and their personalities is a big part of the expectation too. Absolutely. And I think, you know, one thing I want to kind of hone in on here because I, I felt her um, because I've been there where you feel like you're doing a lot of the heavy lifting. You feel like you're being the shoulder to cry on. You feel like you're being what we coined the strong friend. And sometimes you don't realize that you are creating the monster. Like they might've already been a little baby dragon, But when you continue to enable that behavior where you don't push back and say like, you know, these last few times we talked, you never asked me how I was doing. Like, like you really have to highlight that for people. Like Mm -hmm. even your friends, I, I feel like we are always very scared to rock the boat in the friendship relationship where if this was your partner, you would probably rock that boat. You would probably have said something on day two or three, like, You know, this is the third time you came home and I asked you, how was your day? And you didn't ask me. But in friendships, we let that type of stuff just build up and build up and build up and build up. And then it's like you explode and you're like, I'm not the strong friend. And it's like you actually have been. So if you weren't, you should have stepped down from that or been very honest to say, like, I want to feel cared for, too. And I think sometimes, especially I would guess like in male friendships, y'all may not feel as comfortable being like, you know, man, you really hurt my feelings or I just feel like you don't really check on me. And I think it takes mature, very mature and intelligent, emotionally intelligent men to do that. But I feel like with women too, sometimes we feel like that's putting too much on the friendship. Like it's, it feels like, dang, we're not in love. And it's like, but you are in a love relationship. You're not in love But this is a love exchange. So, of course, your feelings can get hurt. Of course, you can feel unappreciated or overlooked. Of course, you can feel like this person is not investing in the relationship as much as you are. I think there's a very fine difference between romance and platonic friendships. There's a very thin line. It really, really is because a lot of the rest of the feelings, they're the same. Y'all do the same things. You go out and have fun together. You share secrets. You laugh at stupid jokes. The only things you aren't doing is building likely a life like you're not (laughs) keeping up a home with any of your homeboys. You're just Mm -hmm. doing that with Brie and you're not sleeping with any of them. Those are really like the only two things. Everything else, it's very similar. So, of course, you have to make room to experience some of the same ebbs and flows of that dynamic because it is a it is an exchange of affection. And, And a lot of times if it's your close friend, like in her situation, If you can love someone, that person is capable of hurting you. If there's love there, there can also be hurt and disappointment there. Yeah. You know, one of of my pet peeves when it comes to friendships is when people distance themselves without communicating why they're distancing. You want me to tear this? You want me to tear this room up? (laughs) Tear it up. (laughs) Because you can't tell me you're my friend and there's something that i'm doing but you're not going to make me aware of it you're just going to say you're not going to mess with me anymore yeah Mm -hmm. that doesn't make any sense Mm -hmm. because if you're my friend yeah you should communicate that to me yeah right yes especially if it's a personality trait or a character trait you feel like yes i'm a selfish person or i talk about people all the time Mm -hmm. like if I'm doing these things and you feel like it's something that is wrong or something that I shouldn't be doing. Mm -hmm. You don't think you should make me aware of that if I'm your friend? Oh, so you're just going to not talk to me anymore. And I don't even know why. Nope. 
that's I, I don't like that because then that's not your friend. No, what the, that's not your friend. That's not your friend. That's PSA. Your, <laughs> PSA. That's not your friend. Loading. Um, let me tell you something. Ghosting grinds my gears, and I don't care who does it. Okay, if you decide that after however long we've been friends however long we've been dating, whatever the, the, the pocket of relationship we're in, if you decide that something goes down and, and you just are going to walk away with no explanation, not even a little courtesy, like, hey, I didn't like that you did that and I don't want to talk about it. I just don't want to be friends anymore. If you do that, I just want you to know that when you go on the opposite side of that door, it's getting locked. It's getting locked. Like, because to me, no it's just, back. yeah, that's, that's just a very hard thing to come back from because it's an, it's a, it's abandonment. It's a form of abandonment. When you just leave someone hanging with no explanation as to why you did that, you could actually have real justification for why you think you need a break. Why you might want to be like, Hey, I need to put this relationship on ice for a second. Like I'm upset that you did this, this, and this, and we need to take a break. Like, I don't want to talk for a few weeks. If if the relationship didn't mean enough to you to give that to me, then you you cannot possibly expect me to have understanding when you decide that you want to come back and be like, yeah, I shouldn't have left you hanging for three months. No, what wound up happening is I got used to your absence. I got used to you being gone and I'm good. Mm -hmm. I'm also hurt and bothered that after X amount of time of investment, Again, you didn't think enough of me to just have a conversation with me, but now you want me to think enough of you to have a conversation with you when you got ready to do it. I'm good. I I don't have that. So, um, I agree with you. I felt personal. Yeah, because it's happened to me. <laughs> it ha it's happened to me more than one time, yeah. and and on both sides of it, yeah. on both sides of it, I just. I really do not like how much people avoid having difficult conversations. If I'm in a relationship with you of any form, we are probably going to have to have a difficult conversation at some point, even in business, even at work. Sometimes you're going to have to have difficult conversations yeah. with people there. I'm just as myself from a friend actually recently, mm -hmm. but I, I didn't tell them that I was distancing myself. But I had conversations with them multiple times about the thing. And it was like, if this continues to happen. Okay. Like, it wasn't so you, like. So, you set off a So, I'm, I'm like, shot. three. Okay. Like, right. physical, like, conversations. Like, okay. bruh. Like, no, you can't. No. And then after a while, because to me, after three times, me saying it, me talking to you ain't that's registering. Not, yeah, that's different. It's, it's not. So, it's yeah. like, um, I've been in those situations to where it's <laughs> like. But I'm always been that person. Like I've never been a person who's been as afraid of having a conversation. Yeah, it's the same. And like, e like honestly, even if it does make you a little nervous or it makes you feel a thing, that just means that it's likely some real feelings there. This yeah. is likely something that you want to probably get on the other side of, and that's why it makes you feel uncomfortable. And that's totally okay. I am worth. I mean, I am. I am willing to go through that process for someone that I love and I value and I want to have the relationship. Listen, if we ultimately decide that we've talked about it and it's too much and we have to let go, cool. But I don't want to not try, you know, like anyone that I truly call a friend, like a real friend, I, they are worth the fight to, yeah, to a sure. point. They're worth the fight to me. No different than my partner would be worth the fight to me or my mother would be worth the fight to me or my kid would be worth the fight to me. These are all relationships that I value. So I would be willing to be like, all right, we're just going to get in a little weird spot for a while, but hopefully mm. we can get on, we can get on the other side of this. Um, but I want to move on to the dating, the, the impact that dating has on friendships. Let me ask you one question. Before okay. That. Yeah. Because I've been thinking about this lately when it comes to friendships. Mm -hmm. Do you think that it's necessary, let's say, if you have an extended friendship that is even half a decade mm -hmm. or a decade, that there has to be a riff in that friendship in order for it to be truly strong and like something that's like a real friendship? Do you have to have to go through the ups and downs with somebody in order for it to be like a real friendship? Um. Uh, more of me says yes than no right I think 
some relationships are just, and and also depends on at what juncture in life you met them Mm -hmm. and in what frequency you all communicate because maybe you haven't hit that moment because you don't talk that much. You know, you're really good friends and every time you talk is solid, but you know, you don't interact enough to experience challenges. I think in that dynamic it's totally okay. Um, But I feel like, again, if I'm applying the concept of romantic relationships, when you think about, like you talked about on the, on the last episode, you knew certain things with Brie because you went through things with her that made you know, like, I can go to long haul with this woman because we can not only have the highs, we can also have the lows. We know how to ride the waves completely. I think friendship is similar. It may not have to be like a full on riff. It may not have to be a full on fallout, but I would hope that in five years, you all have been able to have maybe honest, uncomfortable conversations about certain things. Because I just don't think that everyone, even when you really love and like someone, there's likely some differences between the two of you that will cause a little like, oh, I don't like when you do that. Or I want more for you. Like I saw a video of a, of a girl like in the car with her friend, like giving her very tough love about her dating decisions. And it was a very tough conversation. And she was like, I am so disappointed in you. I want more for you. I want better for you. I want you to stop doing this yourself. She's like really chastising her friend. To me, that's what I'm talking about. They didn't fall out, but they were having a very difficult conversation. And the girl is just like, I think she was a little drunk. The one who was receiving information. She was like, you right. I love you. I'm going to do better. I'm going to do better. Like, I feel like you need to be able to have those, like, really meaningful conversations that may be difficult in order to really. Adversity to me reveals character. So I feel like that will show you the character of who you're dealing with and the character of the overall relationship. I think you need to have a little something. Yeah, I agree. I was I've been thinking about it because mm-hmm. I have really good friends that I haven't had any that mm-hmm. that with. Yeah, but I think it speaks to the depth of the relationship, mm-hmm. right? Um, and when I look at like my friends from college, my boys, Ascend, Sage, Alex, like we've had our riffs and stuff about things, mm-hmm. but that's because we had a deep relate. We lived together, like everything is is a lot different, right? Yeah. Um, and I consider them like family yeah they're like brothers they're like brothers mm-hmm. like they aren't like i feel like that happens sometimes a friendship to me certain people graduate from just being friends to be a family mm-hmm. because it's like it's too much history there to where i've shown up for you you've shown up for me yeah. you've held me down i've held you down we've been through so much together mm-hmm. that we all have cousins that we may not talk to every single day yes you know but that's family right and that's the way i look at it, is that even if some of those friends i don't talk to for six months you it's hard to tell the story of me without you being weaved into that story. Yes. Um, so yeah, I, I just thought about that. So thank mm-hmm. you for no, for no problem. Of course. Um, so yeah, the impact that dating has on friendship, she did talk about that and it sounds like she's very, she has grace for it, right? She has reasonableness around the fact that when you meet someone new, things change. We all got that friend. We all got that one friend who go ghost. Like, <laughs> <laughs> they ain't when they get single uh get in a relationship it's like dang bye where you been um yeah, i had me, i had me, a friend me. recently mm-hmm. that um was my homie um she was actually at my birthday thing i don't okay. know if you saw her but um like we used to hang out all the time she got a dude and it was like i was like yo where you like where I you just say, i'm with my me and my me and my <laughs> me and. but i respect it um first you gotta be respectful of your relationship it's obviously also opposite sex friends it's a little different dynamic yeah um but yeah we all have friends who mm-hmm. like when they get in their situations they go ghost but i think that's expected like yeah. the relationship will shift like yeah because what i talked about two episodes ago when you're in the presence of your person even if you're not doing something inappropriate yeah. the way that you talk shifts the way that you you know operate when it comes to certain things just shifts a little bit out of respect for the person Mm -hmm. um so like for instance when i was single my female friends or women friends Mm -hmm. um sometimes we would share the same bed right we ain't doing nothing we just sleeping in the same bed right but now i have a wife even if i was in the same situation i'll be like i'm gonna get my own room or like something like that i'll get my you know something like that because although i'm not doing nothing Right. It's inappropriate to do that. So yeah. things do will naturally shift. I agree. 
and the time that they spend with you will naturally shift. Yes, I agree. When they get into a relationship. Yes, so that should be expected. Absolutely. I just going dark or completely rogue is a totally different story. Yeah. But I think giving grace for the fact that, yes, they are developing a new relationship and a lot of that singleness or fun times or us just being on the phone with each other. Yes, of course. Like if you're dating someone you're going to now take up some of that time mm-hmm. to invest in that in that situation. Um, I am so thrilled when my friends are occupied with someone that they're really enjoying. Yeah. Like, even if that's taking away from time that we potentially used to have together. Like, I am, I am the friend that is like go be date talk to him like yes see ya like i'm i am like encouraging you to go and do that not because i don't want the friendship but because i feel like i'm here you know i'm gonna be here so like go and do that not to the point of like ghosting me but just like i'm i'm thrilled when they are in a situation especially when it's like good for them like they're not being absorbed in a bad situation they're not you know, neck deep in a situation where the person is dragging them and taking them through changes and they're hiding from me because they're embarrassed by the situation. If it's giving you all the feels, it's respectful, it's fun, it's lovely. It's like, yes, and send me pictures so I could be like, um, one day. Yeah. It's gonna be all of us. And that's why I think <laughs> when you that's why when you get older, you like you have to start to really understand like how how many real friends do you have right mm-hmm. because your time is limited and you do have to prioritize yeah. and what that looks like in a relationship for me is like i spend I, i'm so glad my wife and i just have an understanding on just spending time with friends like we understand like we spend the majority of the, the time with each other yeah majority of the time mm-hmm. so if one of us wants to go out with our friends on a thursday night it's like yeah i see you all the time i live with you Right. Once you leave that friend, you coming back home to me. Right. Like, so, yeah. Waking go enjoy up to me. Yeah, go enjoy that time. And mm-hmm. it's like, there's so many different ways to connect with friends that yeah. to still keep that relationship. So it could be a Thursday night. Some people have friend groups to where it's like, oh, three of us or four of us would get up at the same time to do that. Yeah. Group chats are a great way if you have a good friend group to just feel connected to people, right? Yeah. And stay connected to people. Um, or even being on the phone, like there's so many different opportunities and relationships to still connect with friends mm-hmm. um, to where it's like you are doing the dishes while your person in there watching TV or working on something or playing a video game. Mm-hmm. And you talk to your girlfriend on the phone or you talking to one of your boys on the phone when, you, you know, if somebody is just completely going dark on you, then that's a purpose like that that's something that's being done on purpose in my yeah, opinion. Yeah. Yeah. Um it's not something that's just like, "Oh, I don't have enough time to even Mm-mm. talk to you at all Mm-mm. or connect with you at all." No, they're definitely doing that doing that on purpose. Would you say that you like encourage Bree to have healthy friendships? Of course. Yeah, yeah. Um I said this in a previous episode, the reason why I love my relationship because I first don't feel like we have any restrictions. Mhm. Like, it's not like, can I do this? Can I hang out with this friend? It's like, hey, I'm planning to do this on so and so date. Okay, cool. Like, or if I plan something, she might be like, oh, if you're doing something, I'll go out with so and so. Yeah. Or like, if I'm playing something with my boys, she'll hit up their wife and plan, you know, and do mm-hmm. that. But yeah, I encourage her to have healthy relationships. And the same for me because I've seen the negative effects of having an unhealthy relationship with somebody mm. um, and how that impacts our relationship. And then, the issue, not necessarily the issue with my wife, is that one of the things that makes it challenging for her is that she has such a big heart. Yeah. Um, and we all know people with big hearts tend to be the people who get the most used and abused. Yep. Um, especially in friendships, mm-hmm. right? And it sucks sometimes when you're looking at your person like, that person ain't your friend. Or yeah. they just using you. Or mm-hmm. like, they just need you for this. Or mm-hmm. like, this person, which is the hardest one, I know you love this person, but they're not really adding anything to your life. Yeah. Um, but sometimes you just, just have to taking, taking, taking. Yeah. Or mm-hmm. just not doing anything, not adding, not necessarily taking, but they're just there. But it ends up becoming a negative because you're investing so much time into this thing that's really not yielding anything. Mm-hmm. And I think that that's one thing that 
is a misconception. I want to see your thoughts on it, mm -hmm. that it shouldn't be a mutually beneficial thing. Like there shouldn't be something that you're getting out of it. Right. Yeah. Because people was like, oh, like you shouldn't approach things trying to get something like, no, all my friendships that I'm in, I want to get something out of it. Like I'm not yeah. just in friendships just to yeah. be friends. Like I want to receive something mm -hmm. um, as as I'm giving as yes. well, because that's what relationships are about, in my opinion. Yeah, I I absolutely agree with you. And I think what's also interesting is that sometimes the the thing that you are receiving is the feeling that giving gives to you. Yeah. Like some relationships and some friendships are um, voluntarily one sided, as in, you know, that you are likely more of a mentor, a big bro, big sis, where you are actually OK with not actually receiving the same things that you pour into this person but what you get out of it is that you are helping them you are you are giving them something that they truly need and that's that's usually again in that mentor big bro big sis so there's usually an age dynamic in that type of relationship or maybe there's a power structure in that relationship like you are a senior producer and you're bringing up an intern you know what I mean like mm -hmm. that relationship you don't expect the intern to be able to give you as much as you're giving them. Now they can still teach you some things. You can still learn and receive some things in that relationship. But I, I have had some friendships where I, my expectations of that person, although they were still my friend were low because they just were not in a place. And that was okay that they couldn't give me what I, what I am giving them. For me, it's all about my pot being filled and every day it will not be filled the exact same way. Some days I'm going to get some pour from you and I'm going to get a little pour from Lindsay and I'm going to get a little pour from Maya. The next day I may have to deposit or make a lot more deposits than I got in that day. And that's OK, too, mm -hmm. because then we got tomorrow and then tomorrow I'm going to get a little bit from my sister Mona and I'm going to get, you know, some from my mom and I'm going to ultimately always want to feel filled and that feeling can come from so many different people in my life the last thing though that I want to feel is like every single time I'm interacting with one person I feel like the life is getting sucked out of me that's a totally different thing it's called a parasitic relationship and she is in a parasitic relationship with her childhood best friend which is how I would describe this person y'all are not best friends today you are childhood best friends who still have a semblance of some sort of relationship. It's a loose friendship. It's a distant friendship today. But the overall definition of this friendship is just like childhood relationship. But it's parasitic because she feels very drained from it. She feels just depleted from it. Like I'm, I'm having to be your therapist and I can't even, I'm being your therapist and I can't even get a friendship out of you. You know, like that's just, it's it's just not okay and it's a it's a it's a stinky feeling but i think when you look across your relationships you should feel that your pot is being filled you are you are being poured as much as you're pouring but it may not always come from the exact same combination of people and i know that i am blessed i say this all the time because i it's one of the greatest blessings that i have is that i have a lot of friends and so i have the luxury of being able to get a little from this group over here and then get a little bit from that group over there. So if you don't have a lot of friends, you probably do have high expectations for the few that you do have. Mm -hmm. And so I, so I really do get that. I, I, <laughs> I deeply get that. And I love to hear that you're like very encouraging for Brie. And I think your partner is supposed to be that way. They should encourage your friendships and they should not, um, they should not necessarily always insert their full on feelings, but they should also be trying to help you and guide you through whatever you're dealing with, with your friends, especially if you, if they ask you for that, like, yeah, I feel bad for Brie though, because I like her and I are very much the same to where we have our friends of the same sex, but mm -hmm. we also very much connect with people of the opposite sex yeah. as well. Mm -hmm. And you know, I know, as I've talked about on the show, I have a lot of friends who are women mm -hmm. um, that I talk to and kind of converse with mm -hmm. and hang out with if I wanted to. Mm -hmm. But Brie doesn't necessarily have that as much as from a male perspective. Mm -hmm. And like she had her friends in Cleveland, but obviously she doesn't live there anymore. Yeah. And then 
our one good friend like Antonio, who's like that's one of my best friends, but like it's one of Bree's best friends too. Mm -hmm. Like she's been to his house in Houston when I wasn't there with her mm -hmm. friends, and they all stayed there. Like they yeah. used to go out to go have a drink while I'm at the crib. Like I wish that she could have more of that. You know what I mean? Um, but it's just it's hard we talk about what it looks like in our current situation to meet a new man and mm -hmm. just be like, yeah, that's just my friend. Like, it's hard to figure that out. But I think having that different dynamic is always refreshing because it is a little bit of, of a break and a difference when you have a male friend versus yeah. a, or a friend of the opposite sex. It's yeah. a lot different. I agree. All right. So let's get to the meat here. Okay. Navigating the friendship breakup, because that's what it sounds like we are hearing is on the horizon for, bestie betrayed she is pretty much ready to kind of let it go yeah. and based on everything that she described and i appreciated all of the details it does very much feel like it's time and again it's because of what dre said like it's a parasitic relationship where you don't feel that you're getting anything out of it and you have expectations around it i'm curious though you know like you said that you would you would explain it you would you would give a person chances essentially like hey if you keep doing this or you're doing that or you're doing that i couldn't really grasp if other, she did that if she yeah. did that specifically to what this issue is you did that about you being in labor and her going to hang out with her friends which like trash um you did it about that but it doesn't sound like she's ever communicated like specifically that when you start dating people you just you leave me high and dry and it just doesn't make me feel good. So do you think that before she actually makes this decision to break up with her, that she should try to give her a chance? Or do you think it's been enough time that she 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 the writing is on the wall, for lack of a better term? No, I think so. Everything that we talked about in this episode comes down with this last question, because it comes with defining what friendship is, what mm -hmm. is the expectation. Um, and. It's tough. Mm -hmm. You have to say something, though. Yeah. First, because you can't end a friendship off of an expectation that they didn't even know was there. Yes. Right. If I didn't even know that's what you wanted mm -hmm. or I didn't even know that that was what I was doing or that's how you felt. You didn't even give me what, what do they say a lot of times in a contract. You have a cure right in a mm -hmm. contract to yes. where if you breach the agreement, there's a certain time to be able to cure mm -hmm. to make sure to make things right according to the agreement before you can start to cancel or terminate the agreement or do any type of lawsuit. So it's like, you have to give me the opportunity to cure, but you have to let me know that I actually did something right. like you can't just end it and be like, and the whole time you're telling me why you ended it, it's all news to me. And I'm like, <laughs> wow, you know, you felt this way. Yeah. Like, why didn't you say it before? Mm -hmm. That shouldn't be the time. Cause I see, I feel like a lot of times I've seen, I, I see, unfortunately, this situation happen more with women mm -hmm. than men, right? Mm -hmm. Because you guys just in friendships get more in depth. Mm -hmm. You also require more from your friends mm -hmm. to where men, it's more like we are Yo, definitely more the game. laid back and chill <laughs> and don't require a lot from our friends. Our mm -hmm. friends are our friends. Sometimes I feel like you guys put a lot on your friendships. Mm -hmm. Um and some people do operate sometimes like the inner relationship with their friend. And mm -hmm. it seems a little unhealthy at times mm -hmm, of what mm -hmm. I've seen. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, to where your expectations are a little too high. Uh, but definitely communicate first, like communicate okay. with her if you haven't already. Mm -hmm. um, and then, you know, honestly, if you're at the point to where you're ready to move on, like if that's how you feel, then that's how you feel. Yeah. And you have to, you know, again communicate it but i think going back to what Rhonda said it's maybe demoting her in the hierarchy of the friendships mm -hmm. right that you have right because i think maybe the issue too is that you're still looking at her as best friend right yeah. and it may be college best friend right mm -hmm. or childhood best friend yes which means like Rhonda said the adjective you put in front of it was that we were that at one time yes but now the relationship has graduated to be something different. Yeah. So now the expectation then changes mm -hmm. because the person that I was a childhood friend with maybe would have been there when I was in labor. Mm -hmm. But the person that I'm a friend with now, of course, maybe not. like you probably gonna be in labor for what fifteen hours a day. Mm -hmm. you know, once you had a baby, 
Right. I'll I, come up. I see you. I see you. <laughs> I'll give you a few days, maybe. And that's different types of friendship, right? Yeah. But it, it's not a lot of friends that's coming up to the hospital when you labor. Yeah. That's like one, two. Yes. Like I, maybe three. You know what I mean? Yes. Like that you want there. That's not a, a long list. So mm-hmm. I don't think you should feel bad for, you know, moving away from that person in that space because that's a very rare error mm-hmm. a very rare relationship that yeah. level of friendship that you're expecting is not a five person six person thing it's not that's a one two right yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> so don't feel bad about breaking off breaking off that friendship if that person isn't meeting ex- the expectation no matter if they were a past best friend or not that's it i shout out to my sister mona who who um, held my goddaughter in until I got to the hospital. Like, I was like, Mona, have the baby. Like, I'm coming, but you need to have the baby. She was like, I need you to be here. I need you to be (laughs) here. Like, literally, I am running red lights to get to this hospital so I can see my goddaughter being born. So, Mm. but that is how my best friend, my childhood best friend became my sister. You know, that's that, it, it is that type of thing. Like, I say it jokingly but i'm not joking that if any if it all goes down if i really like need to be taken care of after my mama and and honestly my mom's getting older so i don't even know if my mom has the capacity to be able to take care of me if i really need to be taken care of y'all get me in whatever i can get there in a wheelchair a stretcher get me to my sister because she will do it for me because again that's just the dynamic that we have and i would do the same for her it's why her kids are my godchildren. so um i agree with you dre i think that it needs to be communicated and 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 um bestie betrayed you can communicate it in a very um finite way like you can say you know this is what's been happening I don't like it. This is how it's made me feel. I probably should have said something to you sooner, but I allowed it to fester. But from what I've seen for the last couple of years, it's just a behavior. It's behaviors that I don't like. And I just don't feel like we should continue on in a relationship at this level. You you don't have to give her room to um, recover. Mm-hmm. You can give her room to rebut as in have a response. But you don't have to make room for her to try to get back at that place. Like, because like you said at the, at the was it this episode or last episode? It's like, we both are, it was this one. Yeah, it was it like, we, we, we both really not into it. Because if she only calls you when she's going through issues with men, I'm sure that's not all the time. There are other things in her life that she doesn't talk to you about. So she's checked out. She's checked out too. You know, she's checked out. You're kind of checked out. And the last thing you want to feel like is like really significant moments in your life are not acknowledged yeah. really by all levels of friendship. Like even the most, I mean, hell you got strangers on social media hooping you up for like something you yeah. might share. So your friends, even if they're college friends, work friends, not the best friend, a mutual friend. If you don't see like someone just clapping for you, no like you graduated from college and she didn't even tell you congratulations no that's 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 not it so yes I think you should communicate but I definitely think that the relationship has probably seen its better days and it's it's transitioning now into something that is likely just going to be distant yeah and I wonder if anything at all I wonder what the dynamics of your lives are too Mm mm-hmm because I've seen that with friendships to where it's just subconscious jealousy of your life. Yeah. Um, or because you're doing well, people don't think that you need to be checked on. Mm-hmm. Right. Um, I've had that happen where I get with friends. All the conversations are about the old times. And I ask them how they're doing, but they never ask me how I'm doing. Because, mm-hmm. oh, you good. Like, I see you moving. Like, you, you straight. Like, mm-hmm. you, like it's not. So it's like I, you know, had to start to look at those friendships and be like, oh, so this is just a different dynamic now. Yeah. And that may be the situation. She doesn't call you anymore. She doesn't check up on you anymore or do anything like that or even mm-hmm. congratulate you. Either maybe it's because she's subconsciously envious of you um or you know it could also be that you know she just isn't thinking about you you're not a priority Mm -hmm. um 
but yeah, it, it, it's just a lot of different reasons why that yeah. can happen. And it just, it's unfortunate, but I've been there before and know that, you know, that dynamic changes sometimes it and, and you have can. to, you know, not necessarily embrace it, but be okay with the change of the season. That's it. And, and I, I, my, my kind of last thing to you as a person who's been through some friendship breakups more than one, um, I've also been through some breakups to make ups, you know, mm-hmm. fell out, but, but figured out a way to come back to each other. Um, you may not feel this, but I just want to prep you in case you feel it. Breaking up with a friend, especially one that you've had for a very long time, can absolutely feel like heartbreak because, again, there's love there. There's memories there. You, Your families might know each other. You might call their mom. You know what I'm saying? And then the friendship group part of it is oh hard, too. Yeah, if you have mutual friends. Yeah, that's the part of where it gets oh my it. gosh, people tiptoeing just, around. Oh, yep. You got to pick which thing you going to come to, <laughs> which thing they can come to. You know, like, it's a lot to navigate. So I just want to... You know, I want you to give yourself grace, but also room to like feel sadness about it, to grieve the friendship, because that's a that's a very normal thing. I don't want you or anybody to make you feel like grieving the loss of a friendship should not feel emotional because it probably will feel emotional. And that's totally okay. Like it's it's totally okay to feel sadness, to feel loss, um, and to feel like you got your heart broken in, in in the process, because certainly this is not what you wanted. It's just what happened. But like Dre said, when you get on the other side of it, you'll just have to be OK with realizing that that friend was not a lifetime friend. That was a season and it was a it was a mostly good season. You know, you were there for what you were supposed to be there for. Yeah. And that's that's kind of it's kind of that on that. Well, we wish you the best. We do. We really do. And I'm sorry that you're dealing with this. Um, yeah. I uh, said it's never easy, Mm-mm. never, never easy. Um, but I, I have faith that you'll get through it. And like you said, you feel like we're your friends that you never met. So there you go. What up? You dropped that zero and got two heroes. There we go. Bing bong. Zero You're welcome. <laughs> but thank you so much for writing in. For those of you that have watched, we hope that you found something really beneficial. And um, I like this little different twist. You yeah. know, it wasn't fully about romantic relationship but um but yes if you want to write in you know where to find us relationship restored.com click that contact button and write into the show and of course follow us on social media i'm at ronnie cakes as dre smith and at relationship restored we'll see you next time peace